What's up everybody and welcome back to another gold making video. We are actually on my rogue today. I generally make videos on my druid just because that is my preferred gold making class, but sometimes you have to go rogue, especially for this farm today. I you could do this on other characters or other classes, but I highly highly recommend rogue just for quality of life. So, I believe other people have made videos on this topic before. However, none of them featured the rogue. And I only say that because nowadays, as an outlaw rogue, you are able to track treasure. So you go here and it's just like tracking herbs or ore. You just go over here and toggle on your find treasure. I don't believe it automatically clicks, so you, you have to check to make sure that it's available. But anyway, we are located in Blasted Lands today. So we are going to farm not only the rares, but also the treasure chests here. So we are located right here next to Zadormi because you have to right click and just make sure that you are pre-invasion. So if you are, it will say, take me back to the present. So we just have to be back in time here. Now, another quality of life is I have a couple of add-ons that help me tre tremendously. I have handy notes. And I also have Silver Dragon. So I actually have a nice uh, little handy notes for Silver Dragon here, which shows all of the rares. And then I also have Gather Mate, which shows me where all of the treasure chests are. So fantastic add-ons. Highly recommend that you get those if you don't already. And then I also use a macro that I have here at number one, which I will click throughout the video. And it tracks with the rares, basically. So Handy Notes and Silver Dragon are fantastic. However, Silver Dragon won't, like, if you mouse over it, that's the only time the add-on will go off. So I have this rare here. So I would have missed him had I not used my macro. So we will kill him real quick. And voila. So the reason we're farming in the Blasted Lands is because of this item here. There's the Imperfect Dranithist Fragment, and then there's the Flawless one, which is the blue version. So the green will net you a green, and the blue will net you a green. And what I mean by that is these items here, if I right click on this, it begins a quest for me. So you will go turn this fragment in here into uh, Kumisha, the Collector. He is just over here, so right here. So at the very end of our video, we will go over and turn in what we got. But when you turn in a green, you'll get a green. So basically, we're getting not only the greens from killing the rares, but we're also going to get another green or a blue when we turn in the quest. So this is just a fantastic way of just piling up the items on your auction house. And a lot of these also have a little bit higher of a sell rate. Generally, transmog will be 0 0.01 or 0 0.02 cell rate, but these are generally 0 0.02, 0 0.03, and there's actually one that I got earlier that was even 0 0.05. So I actually did click on my loot appraiser, and we can get a new session going, so you can see how much I got or get for doing this farm. So we'll just head over this way now. This next one is in a cave, but if we are close enough we should be able to see whether or not the rare is up we can just go right here and use our macro and our rare is up you see that so you just have to make sure that you are right up here i wouldn't go in there without knowing just because this is kind of a long trek back here so let's go run all the way back to get mojo the treasure chest oh the treasure chest is up too perfect so these are the treasure chests we are after right here these blue ones or sorry, these red ones here, I don't know why I said blue. These red ones here, the silken treasure chest, and they generally will drop a blue. So we got the Lordly Arm Guards, only 155 gold region market, but they do have a 0 0.03 sell rate. So once again, it is a little bit higher than your average transmog. And I would know, considering that is how I primarily make my gold via transmog. All right, let's head out of this cave, and there is just one other cave in this area right here to check. We will make sure that there isn't the treasure chest up right here. It's not. And let's use our macro. Doesn't look like this. Oh, he is up. Okay. 
was gonna say it doesn't look like this rare is up, but there he is. Oh, perfect. The flawless. So as you can see here on my loot appraiser, it actually dinged that one because it's such a high gold threshold. So I haven't had much luck selling it. I've posted a couple to the auction house and it has a 0 0.02 sell rate. And so I kind of expected that I would sell at least one or two, but no one has bought it yet. So I think you might be better off just using them yourself. See, there's another. So this is actually going to, I was, I was gonna try and show you guys how much you could make from doing this just from greens, but this is actually going to inflate our gold per hour now because you see we're already up to 24K because of these two spheres here. All right, let's check. Yep, so our rare here is up. That one did ding. Got another one, okay. Well, we're, we're doing pretty good. Last go around, I just did this a couple minutes ago on a different server. Uh, and I ended up getting way more of the green versions than the blue. So let's go check over here. I am, I don't think I pointed this out earlier, but I am server hopping myself around. Now, you can do this if you have another account. You can do this on trial characters, or you can do what I did, and I ported all of my level ones to Stonerd as a mage. So definitely easy for me to fly down there on Horde side. Alliance side, it's a little bit more annoying to fly level ones around. So I wanted to do this on Horde side. And I actually am not on war mode. I am I'm toggled off on war mode at the moment. So you could easily do this on both. But it's a little bit harder to toggle between the two if you're server hopping yourself around. So I just, I decided to stay war mode off for now. There are two treasure chests up here in this cave here. Just gonna mouse over them. I don't go into that cave. I think that cave is a little too big and not really worth my time going into. If you want to, you can, but I wouldn't recommend it. Our rare is up, but I don't see our treasure chest. So we'll kill Cassia here. Got another flawless and a green. So far, the greens have just been kind of okay. Nothing fantastic here. But once again, you're not going to become a millionaire from these greens, but they definitely will add up, especially if you're new to gold making. This is one of the things that I recommend like you do first thing if you're just getting into gold making. That way you can get some greens up in the auction house, especially with their a little bit higher of a sell rate than normal. Kill Akubar here. Got another blue. This is fantastic and got an ornate circlet. That one's just kind of ho-hum. Looks like it's 500 gold and a 0 0.02 sell rate. Now we're coming up on the vulture rare. Kind of annoying to find. I'm hoping we can tag him early on. He kind of flies all over the map. So he's not necessarily like, I think it says that he's over in this area here, but he is all over the place. I found him over here last time. Kind of disappointed we haven't seen another treasure chest yet, but hopefully we will get at least, yep, we'll find our rare here. Get Mordak, a mystical boots, and an imperfect. Okay. Nothing here. Okay, let's head over. We're just going to make a quick little loop on the inside here and kind of go down like this because there are a couple rares up here that we don't want to miss. But now that I said that, oh, okay, perfect. I was going to say, now that I said that, they're not even going to be up. But Death Eye is up. Perfect. Didn't get anything good from him, though. Nightshade Arm Guards. Just make sure that this isn't up. And then we will stop by. Ravage is up. Perfect. And then we'll stop by here on the way back to get Kumisha the Collector. And see if we get anything good from there. From our, our items, we'll turn in. We're doing really good, though, on getting the blues, though. I'm very, very excited about that. Hopefully that means we're going to get a good blue. Here's Grunter. And I believe we just have one more, which would be our dragon over here. He kind of wanders this whole area, though. I'm not seeing him. He's generally... Oh, okay, perfect. I was going to say he's generally pretty easy to find. Hopefully this doesn't end poorly. 
you want to perfect it's a little worried there okay perfect another blue all right so i'm hoping we get something good from these blues here let's at least accept one of these quests now i believe there is a macro to make it easier to turn in all of these but i don't have the macro set up oh okay perfect i don't know why but i always think this guy here is a rare spawn every single time every single i can't tell you the amount of times that i have done this and every single time i still think that he is a rare spawn <laughs> All right, yeah, so there is a macro to make this easier. I don't have it set up, but let's check and see. We can just keep going and we'll do, let me let me sort this a little bit. We'll just put these in different areas here. We'll just make this a little bit easier on ourselves and then we'll, we'll open all of them at the very end to see if we get anything good here. Would you talk to me, please? You don't wanna talk to me? That's cool. I broke it. Wasn't planning on breaking it. Okay, perfect. Can we talk to you again? Perfect. Just a couple more of these. I'm hoping I didn't get anything good the last go around. All of all of the blues that I got were kind of ho hum, and sometimes that's going to happen. Sometimes you're going to get unlucky. We are. I'm hoping going to get at least one good blue. The reason we're doing this, the reason we're trying to get the blues here is because there is a chance of getting the Chan's Imperial Robe and the treasure chests in this area actually have a pretty decent chance of dropping the Orb of Deception, which is a toy. On my server, it generally goes for 20,000 gold and it always sells very, very quickly because it's one of those toys where it transforms your character into a member of the opposing faction. So kind of a neat one. All right, we'll do all of the green ones first, and then we'll do all of the blues. So let me open my loot appraiser window back up, and let's see. Nothing. Chieftains, 700, 645. 907 for the leggings. Very nice. Those leggings have a 0 0.03 sell rate. They're way cheaper on my server, though. I wouldn't post them because they are apparently 27 gold here. But I play on a very, very high pop server, so... Nothing good out of the greens for me. Let's check these blues though. All right, Mugthol's Helm. 0 0.05 sell rate on that, that's fantastic. Gut Buster, a gun, 0 0.01 sell rate, but that's really high price, 1.2K there. Executioner's Cleaver, ooh, this one I'm keeping. This one is just slightly, un no, it's more, is it? No, it's just slightly under the region market value. So the region market is almost 5k here with a 0 0.02 sell rate. So very happy about that one. That one made it worth it. This Cassandra's Grace ring, I might try to post because it's actually at level here. Everything that you turn in here, you're actually getting like normally, you know how when you kill something, it's a, like the requires level 60 if you're above 60. So these are actually at level here. So this is level 42 for the ring. So I might try and sell it, see if that sells. Got Bone Chewer and we got a bonus green here. I noticed that in the last time that I did this too. I actually ended up getting not only a blue, but also a green. Same. Wow, we got that twice in a row. All right. So we didn't end up with a whole lot of good blues here. A couple though. And so this one here, like, like I said, I mean... There are better farms out there, but this one is 100% fantastic because you can do this on your own. You don't need a group to come out and get all of these greens and blues here. And if you get the chains and pre robes, you are set. Those sell for quite a bit of money. In fact, let's check and see how much they're going for on my server. We're, we're going to pull up our Bruto. Chains and pre robes. If I could spell... Yeah, so they are, wow, there's only one on my server at the moment. It is going for 150k, which is a little bit higher than the region market, which is 84k. But either way, if you get these from the flawless sphere, you are golden. You will have made this farm 100% worth it. 
But that's it guys. Thank you all so, mu so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and would like to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.